Hi everyone, in this video we're going to discuss a few line search methods. So just as a quick review, if we um, consider xn to be our current iteration, uh, line search methods are concerned with this uh, function phi of alpha, which is a scalar function because all it tells us is the scale. We've already chosen our um, descent direction as the gradient um, direction. In general, this could be pn, but um, for gradient descent, we're choosing uh, that direction as the negative gradient. And in the last video, we discussed the Wolf conditions, the Omihio condition, and the curvature condition. And this, these are those repeated. So Armijo means sufficient decrease of the function. This is 5 alpha is less than or equal to 5, 0, minus some constant that you set times the, the step length, times the gradient squared. And then the curvature condition is that the slope at alpha is greater than or equal to some constant times the slope at 0. And this is this um, gives us sufficiently large steps. OK, so I'm just going to go over two common line search methods. One is exact line search, and this is the most intuitive, I would say. For this one, you um, so this one is not the one I would suggest. It's the second method. So exact line search directly minimizes phi of alpha. So it it solves a an auxiliary um, minimization problem. So what you do here is you solve. Uh, so one way is to just call some package that minimizes this directly. Um, but whatever that package does, it would need the gradient. So let's compute what this gradient is. So this is dd alpha of f of xn minus alpha gradient f of xn. And so the chain rule is going to give you that this is the gradient um, is minus the gradient dotted with the gradient at f of xn minus alpha gradient f of xn. And where is that equal to 0? And that is, that is the question. So you solve that. Um, and then, you know, you can get in the nitty gritty. You have to verify that it is actually minimum. Um, you solve that root. And the, you get that minimum. And uh, that's the alpha that you choose. You choose directly the optimal alpha of these that gives you um, the uh, largest decrease. But in theory, these might not necessarily satisfy the Armijo conditions. Because if this, let's say, for example, that you minimize this function. So let's say that, uh, yeah, let's say you minimize this function. But the step length is like 10 to the 10th or something like that. So you stepped super far away. But if you, so alpha is 10 to the 10th, but let's say that alpha equals 0.1. Uh, so at uh, a 10 to the 10th, you get f of x equals um, zero, which is, uh, yeah. So let's say that uh, f of x is zero when you take alpha equals 10 to the 10th, but f of x equals 10 to the minus 100 for alpha equals 0 0.2. Um, Alpha is the only thing that changes here, so you might violate the, the Armijo condition by um, doing this exact line search. So the one I'll suggest here, and uh, I'll show in a later video that this will actually converge slower on an example um, problem. Um, that I'll show you that in the next video. Because it seems like exact line search should be the way to go, but it's it's not quite as robust as, as this. So 
And two, we're going to, this is called backtracking line search. And this is the one I suggest to do. And this uses the wolf conditions. And again, the wolf conditions are just both of those put together. It's Armijo plus curvature. So this approach says, that you set a starting um, step length alpha naught. And then you say while um, while the wolf conditions are violated, and you set alpha to alpha naught, say. Alpha is alpha divided by two. And now in theory, you can choose anything greater than one, but let's just do two because it'll converge super fast to something, right? We don't have to be super precise with it. Um, and, and this is the whole point, that in the limit, as this goes to zero, you should eventually hit this asymptotic behavior because remember that the, these are asymptotic behavior types of things. So if, if alpha is super small, well, phi prime of alpha should be close to phi prime of zero. And since C2 is less than one, eventually we're gonna get there. Similarly, um, this is sort of your local asymptotic behavior is alpha times the gradient of, of F squared when you move in that direction. So of course, when C1 is strictly less than one, um, and it's greater than zero to preserve the direction, then um, in that limit, we eventually should satisfy the wolf conditions. So as long as we don't know how, how, how long that's going to take. So if we divide by two, we're going to get this exponential um, convergence so that we don't have to do this too many times. Because at the end of the day, you have a computational budget that you're dealing with. So let's see how this backtracking works. Um, for uh, the example from the previous video with f of x equals x squared, and we choose alpha naught to be one. So if you recall, um, when we did this, if we chose a fixed step length, and, and we're choosing um, x naught equals one, we chose this fixed step length, what ended up happening was we bounced to negative one, and the negative one sent us right back to one, and so on, and we never converged. But the point is, when we do this on step one, we see, okay, well, we decreased zero. Therefore, we violate the wolf condition. And then what we do is we say, we'll cut it in half. So now our step is... Um, is uh, one half of two, which was, the two came from the fact that the gradient is two X. So uh, we choose alpha equals one, we do two twice. So now we do alpha equals a half. We do time multiply by two because the gradient is two. And then we actually, we hit the minimum right, right there. If we choose alpha naught equals say 10, we're actually gonna see an increase because we go way out here. Then we cut it to five. And then we go um, somewhere way out. Then 2.5, then 1.25. 1.25 is still gonna see us go up, but then it's then we get 0. 0.6, which will correspond to going to uh, roughly 1.2. And boom, we're, we satisfy the wolf condition. And so then we would jump here. And then at this point, Right. If we choose the same character, in theory, you can change the starting one as well. We do the same thing, but notice that because of this exponential decrease, we actually got, we only had to sample a few times to get to this point, and this is pretty close to the minimum. So that's backtracking line search and exact line search. And in the next video, I've written up a code um, that implements this. So I'll show you uh, some examples of to show you that exact line search um, won't converge as fast as backtracking line search. And 
in general, this will be less robust than, than fact tracking line search. Hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.